Radical Mondays. They're not manic Mondays. They're not, oh gosh, I hate Mondays. They're radical Mondays. Every day in Jesus is radical. Good morning. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, author of our devotional Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still small voice of God. Also, evenings with the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, God is with you. Hello, New Zealand. Today's devotion titled, Don't Dwell on Past Mistakes. There's nothing you can do about the past. There's not a person alive who has not made mistakes. Although it's good to learn from the poor decisions you've made, it does no good to dwell on them to the point of guilt, regret, and condemnation. You learn in part from your mistakes, says God. Pray for those who, who you may have injured by your missteps and release your concern about them. Repent for the trespasses that lie heavy on your heart. Then let them go, says God. Commit to walking circumspectly before me. Forgive yourself and move forward. You are not the only one who has made costly mistakes. But why keep paying the price forever? Repent and let them go. Praise God. That is a good, good word for somebody. Let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. Those are three words. They're awfully prophetic this morning. Let it go. Would you just let it go? Release, repent, let it go. Just let it go. I don't know who this is for, but somebody needs to let it go. My, 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 my. Let it go. Today's scripture references 1 John 1 and 9, Isaiah 43, verse 25. And Psalm 103, verse 12. And the prayer starter for today, I've let the devil beat me up about my shortcomings for too long, but no longer. I choose to receive your forgiveness and walk in it. I choose to believe that you have removed my transgressions from me and that you remember them no more. 
Father, we thank you this morning that you just let it go. Praise God that you've let it go. When we repent, when we come to you, you let it go. You don't harbor hard feelings against us. You don't continue to hold on to offenses, to our offenses against you. You just let it go. We give you praise and glory and honor this morning, God, because you are worthy. You are awesome. You are mighty. You are tremendous. Oh, my goodness. You are tremendous as they say down in the, as my Hispanic friends say, tremendo. You are tremendous. There is no other God like you. You are tremendous. You are astounding. You are magnanimous. You are holy. You are awesome. You are worthy of all of our praise, all of the honor, all of the glory. We lift up the name of Jesus. We focus on you, Jesus. We're not going to focus on our past mistakes today, Jesus. We're going to focus on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're not going to focus on our shortcomings today oh my god we're gonna focus on you the prince of peace the way maker we're so grateful to you god that you're not looking in our past bringing it back up into our faces but you've cast away our sin as far as the east is from the west and listen into the sea of forgetfulness we thank you lord that we can forget our past sins once we repent we can forget once we repent we can come on repent and forget repent and forget repent and forget forget. We're not going to dwell on those things because you don't dwell on them. We're not going to hold on to those things because you're not holding on to them. You're holding on to us and nothing shall snatch us from your hand. I thank you, Lord, that the battle that's raging in our minds, the battle that's raging in our souls, we say be peaceful, be peaceful, peace be still, peace be still, peace be still, peace be... Yes, some of you are just real. That's what it is. Let it go. Some of you are just wrestling you're wrestling, you're wrestling, you're wrestling over past issues. Some of it, it was from yesterday, and you woke up this morning just feeling condemned, feeling guilty for something you said, something you did, something you didn't say, something you didn't do. Oh, but you've got to stop. You've got to let it go. Hashtag let it go. Today is a day to get radical about letting things go. You've got to let it go. We've got to have a radical mentality to let go of the things God has let go of. To let go are the things God has told us to let go of. Oh, dear God, dear God, dear God, would you help us? Would you help us? Would you help us? Would you help us this morning? The Lord showed me over the weekend. He told we were talking about grit, and it's good to have grit. It's good to have determination. It's good to have a perseverance. It's good to have a bulldog mentality. It's good to have some tenacity, but when there's no grace, because, oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. When you've got grit, but the grace has lifted off a thing, you've got to let it go. Oh, you've just got to let it go because it becomes grueling. It becomes grueling. It's good to have grit, but grit without grace becomes an exercise that's grueling. It's grueling to hold on to something that God is calling you to let go of. It's grueling to keep holding on, to keep grabbing hold, to keep grasping for something with, 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 with grit. It can even be holy grit, a holy determination. Uh, oh, come on. There's some of you that need to let go of things from your past, of things from yesterday. Let go of the shame. Let go of the condemnation. Let go, let go, let go, let it go, let it go, let it go. But there's some of you that need to let go of something where the grace has lifted. I said this. I said when the grace has lifted, you got to let it go. you got to move on. It's part of your transition. God, would you give us discernment today? Would you give us discernment today? We don't want to be gritless. We want to be gritty. We want to be determined. We want to grab hold to everything you've told us to grab hold of. We want to walk in radical purpose. Come on. Radical purpose. Radical purpose. Radical purpose. God wants to unleash the radical purpose he's put on the inside of you. It might look like a seed right now, but it's a purpose. It's got, oh, Jesus, would you help me this morning? Y'all are pulling so many different radical, radical, radical purpose. You need radical grit to, to, to execute your radical purpose. But there's some things that some radical assignments, some radical distractions, some radical things from your past that the enemy wants to throw in your face to keep you from entering in to your radical purpose. God's purpose for you. It's radical. Listen, there is radical provision for your radical purpose. There is radical grace where there's radical purpose. There is radical uh, whatever it is you need. Whatever it is you need. Whatever. Radical peace walking in your radical purpose. Oh, Jesus. 
But when you won't let something go, it's stymieing you. It's hindering you. God, would you give us discernment in this season, God, to step into that place of radical grace, to step into that place of radical provision, to step into and to step out. Oh, God, some we've got to, oh, yeah, yeah, come on, Jesus. We've got to step out of some things before we can step into some things. This is not a new word. God says this to us every two or three months about the transition, about the stepping out, about the letting go. We We've got to do it. We've got to do it. We've got to do it. We've got to be willing. Radical obedience to let go. To let go of those things that are dead. To let go of those things where the grace has lifted. To let go of those things where it's nothing but strife and conflict. To let go of those things where there's nothing but misery. To let go of those things that just don't work out. To let go of those things that just are not ever going to happen. And we can't make it happen by our grit. We can't make it happen. We cannot make something happen. That oh Jesus. That God doesn't want to have happen. Happen. Or if we do make it happen, guess what? We've got an Ishmael. We can't force God's hand. God, would you forgive us today for, for just for just not being willing to let things go, for trying to make things happen in our own strength, by our own grit, apart from your grace, trying to make things happen, trying to help you bring things to pass that you never authored, trying to help you, trying to make it happen when you didn't want it to happen. God, would you forgive us today? Would you ha- help us to, to enter into a radical release, that you, we would be willing, uh, out of a radical uh, sense of purpose, to release the things that have come against us, to release the things that have gotten in the way, to release the things that we thought were you, but they weren't. Oh, Listen, there's no shame in a thing. Release it. You might have thought it was God. It's not God. Or you might have thought it was God, and it was God for a season, but the cloud has moved. The fire has moved. The glory has moved. And and we've got to move with the cloud. We've got to move with the fire. We've got to move with the glory. Radical release. A radical release. God is a radical releaser. He releases you from your sins. He releases you into your purpose. Listen, God never releases you from something without releasing you into something. But you've got to step out of a thing before you can step into a thing. God, help us discern in this season what you're calling us to do. Help us discern in this season your purpose. Because there's a purpose for every season under heaven. There's a purpose for every gift you've put in us. There's a purpose for every dollar you've put in our pocket. There's a purpose. There's a purpose. There's always a purpose. It's about radical purpose this morning. Come on. Let's press in to the radical purpose. We don't want to be left behind. We don't want to be missing out. We don't want to be those who didn't move with the cloud, who didn't move with the fire, who didn't move with the glory, who camped out around an old revelation, who camped out around a partial purpose. When Lord, your purpose for our life is progressive. Help us to keep walking. Help us to keep stepping. Help us to keep moving. More and more, 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 more into that purpose, into that radical purpose that you've had for us. Because your purpose is not mamsy pamsy. It's not just. It's not just quiet. And and, and your purpose for us, it, it, it's 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 big. It's bigger than we could ever know. And the seed of the purpose is in our lives. It's in our hearts. You planted the seed when we were born again. When we were born. When we were when we were in our mother's womb. That seed of purpose was on the inside of us and when we got born again you watered it with your word and you energized it with your spirit and you caused that sense of purpose to grow in us and I just see that so many of you are discontent so many of you are discontent because you haven't discovered your purpose dear Lord help us this morning or because your purpose has been has been frustrated the enemy has frustrated your purpose many of you you're just dear Lord you're just you're discontent because you're like, well, well, Lord, what is my radical purpose? I, I, that's great. You pray, you pray, and you're praying about ra- but what is my radical purpose? Lord shows me many of you are discontent. You're discontent because you don't know. You don't know. You don't know what your purpose is. You don't know. You just don't know, and it's frustrating. Others of you are frustrated because your purpose isn't, isn't manifesting. You don't have a platform. You don't have an opportunity. You don't have a way. But let me just tell you, Jesus is the way maker. And when you're faithful with the little, God will make you ruler over much. Because he has a radical purpose for your life and he doesn't intend for it to be untapped. Some of you are just sitting in the wrong church. You're 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 sitting in the wrong job. You're sitting with the wrong friends. You're sitting in the wrong, come on. 
Your, your purpose can be stifled and stymied by those around you. Your, your purpose can be stifled and stymied by your own uh, un, 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 inability to recognize the enemy in your mind, tearing you down, tearing you down, discouraging you, causing doubt, unbelief, fear. Others of you just, you just haven't found your purpose yet. Oh, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to reveal purpose, to reveal gifts, to reveal callings in Jesus' name. Lord, help everyone on this call to be, listen, to be laser focused. Lord, help us to be laser. Pray this with me. Lord, help me in this season to be laser focused on determining my purpose, entering into my purpose, equipping myself for my purpose. And enjoying the radical purpose that you have created me for. Lord, I will not be stopped by my own self from entering into my purpose. I will not allow the enemy to stop me from fulfilling the radical purpose that you have planned for my life since you created me in my mother's womb. Lord, help us, help us to in enter into and engage with that radical purpose. Don't be discouraged today if you don't know what your purpose is. Look what your gifts are. That will help you. I can't teach on that right now. Praise Jesus. That's why we do the Accelerate Series at Awakening House of Prayer. That's our Accelerate Series, accelerating you into your purpose. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Where do you want to go from here, God? I just feel uh, just almost like some of you have just been let down. I just, all of a sudden, I could just feel that, that almost like that let down, like, 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 just like, like almost like a, like a deep sigh or a throwing up of the hands. That discouragement that comes from seeing others continue to walk in their purpose and advance in their purpose when you seem like you're just stuck, like you've got concrete shoes on and you're dragging along. Father, help us today. Disappointment. 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 Discouragement. You know, they run hand in hand. Disappointment runs into discouragement. Discouragement runs into depression. So we come against that mindset that would, that would, that would accept a disappointment as a destiny. Your disappointment, it's not your destiny. The discouragement, it's not going to derail you. The depression, it's not going to its not going to keep you down. I just break disappointment right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. We are not going to be disappointed because things didn't work out the way that we thought they should. We're not going to be disappointed, God, because that miracle didn't come through what we expected it for. I thank you, Lord. We're not going to be disillusioned in you because something didn't work out the way that you told us it would. We're not going to question our ability to hear from God. We're going to understand and know that there's a radical devil out there and he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. But you're a radical restorer. You're a radical reconstructor. The enemy comes to deconstruct, but God, you came to reconstruct. And whatever it is the enemy has caused us to, to think about you, God, we repent over it. Where it's not your fault, Jesus. We're not going to question our ability to hear from you. We're going we're gonna to stand in that place and believe for radical restoration, radical redemption, Radical rejuvenation, radical, come on, radical, 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 radical reconciliation, radical purpose, radical destiny. We're going to press into the radical. We're not going to be lukewarm because something did not happen. We're not going to back off the fight because we got knocked down. We're going to rise up like radicals. We're going to be radical spiritual warriors. Come on, the word of the Lord for this month was rise. Oh, radicals rise. He's looking for radical warriors who are willing. Come on, we're gonna we're getting a second wind. The Lord said in the prophetic word this month that He's releasing a radical wind on the willing. So Lord, we're willing today, and we're shaking off disappointment, and we're shaking off the disillusionment, and we're shaking off the discouragement, and we're shaking off the depression because it's not getting us anywhere. It's not taking us where you want us to be. It's causing us to regress instead of progress. And you've got a radical, you've got a radical progressive plan in mind. The enemy wants to see a radical regress. 
progression, but you want to see a radical progression. You want to, see, Lord, you're able to make up the time. You're able to redeem the time. You're able to do it. 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 Rise, oh radicals, rise. Come on, let's take back what the devil stole. Let's not lick our wounds anymore. Let's not turn on one another any longer. Let's not blame everybody, including God. Let's not walk around in guilt and shame. Let's not walk around with our heads downcast. Radical. Radical. The enemy is a radical destroyer, but God is a radical redeemer. We've been justified. We're on top of the world. I said we're on top of the world. I said we're on top on. We're on top of the world. We're on top of the world. We're on top of the world. We are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Radical winds of change. Radical winds of blessing. Radical winds of provision. Radical winds of healing. Radical winds of the Holy Spirit blowing away all the enemy's plans. Oh, I thank you, Lord. We will not be downcast. We will not be discouraged because you have given us courage. You are encouraging us every day by your word and by your spirit. We receive the encouragement of the Lord. We receive the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit. We receive God. We're gonna, we got a fresh pep in our step this morning. We're receiving from you. We're receiving from your spirit. A radical infilling. Come on. A radical outpouring. Come on. A radical, 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 radical encounter this morning with your good. Goodness. Come on, you are good. You are good, Jesus. You are good. You are good. You are good in your mercy. It endures forever. I thank you, Lord. We're discouraged no more. We're downcast no more. We're depressed no more. We're disappointed no more. Lord is reappointing us this morning. He's reappointing our mindset. We walked in a feeling one way. We're walking out feeling another way. I thank you, Lord. Help our emotions to line up with your word. We give you the reins of our heart. We're not going to look at this as a manic Monday, but a radical Monday. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I break every demonic cycle off your life in the name of Jesus. And we stand and receive your encouragement today in the name of the Lord. Radical wind blowing away the enemy's plans. Radical, 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 radical encounter with the goodness of God. We thank you, Lord. We're going to be encouraged today. Come on. Be encouraged today. Be encouraged that God has a radical purpose for your life. You will walk in it. The enemy will not stop you. You will not stop yourself. Religious systems will not stop you. Babylonian structures will not stop you. You are unstoppable in Jesus. You are unstoppable in Christ. Come on. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Somebody just needs to say that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all. There's nothing I can't do. There's just not a thing in the world I can't do in Jesus. Whatever he's told you to do, you can do it. Whatever he's whispered in your ear, you can do it. Whatever he's called you to do, you can do it. You've got a radical purpose. You've got a radical, radical purpose. You've got a radical purpose. You've got a radical purpose for our lives because you're a radical God. Come on, you can do all things. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can, you can hear the voice of God. You can receive your healing. You can get that promotion at work. You can follow your dream and see it come to pass. You can do it. You come on. Hashtag I can do it. You can do it. I'm telling you, you can do it. Whatever God has told you. You're saying, well, I haven't heard God. He, you, you can hear God. You can hear him. He will adjust his volume to the, to, the, to, the, to the degree that you can hear him. Don't be so concerned. Don't confess that you can't hear him. Don't confess that anymore. You say, I can hear from God. I hear his voice and the voice of another I will not. I can hear him. I can hear him. I can hear him. I can do it. Praise God. I can do it. Come on. You can do this. You can do it. You can do it. Whatever it is you're going through, you can make it. Listen, you're going to make it. 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 God is with you. If God is for you, who can be against you? Praise God. You can do this. Listen, God is on your side. Whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever it is you're trying to overcome, whatever it is you're trying to achieve, whatever it is you're trying to you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do this. You can do it. God is for you. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to walk in your radical purpose. 
You're not going to get stuck in the middle. You're not going to faint before the finish line. I said, you're not going to be, be stuck in the middle. You're not going to faint before you can do this. You've got perseverance. You've got tenacity. You've got all the seeds of greatness on the inside of you. You can do this. Nothing's going to stop you. The enemy wants to come and lie and lie and lie and bring smoke and mirrors and obstacles. But you are a champion. You can leap over every obstacle. You can do it. He wants to make you. The devil wants to make you think you can't. God wants you to know you can. The enemy wants you to think you can't. God wants you to know that you can. The enemy wants to make you think you can't. And he brings people around you to tell you why you can't. And well, if it's the Lord's will, sister, I'll break all those religious voices that want to make everything about, ah, oh, well, maybe you didn't hear from God. Well, if it's the Lord's will, you can do it. Guess what? If the Lord told it to you, it's his will. If you can find it in the word of God, it's his will. You can do it. You, we're not listening to these other voices. God, we're going to listen to your voice. Voice. And those who speak according to your will and to your word, you can do this, whatever it is. Oh, yes, there will be resistance. We're not foolish. We're not simple. We know, Lord, that there will be opposition. We know that all hell will break loose against us on some days. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any bit of difference. You can do it because God is in you. If he said it, you can do it. If it's in his word, you can do it. All his promises are yes and amen. Praise God. Amen. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. I want to inspire faith in you today. You can do it. You really can. Guess what? I can do it too. We can do it together. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Be encouraged. You can do it. I want to share something with you in just a minute that I, I was reading um, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe. Uh, he's gone on to be with the Lord, uh, as you know, but uh, he taught me so many things. I remember uh, uh, sitting with him one time uh, for about an hour and a half and just listening to him, listen, listening to him talk about the kingdom of God. And when I got off that phone call, I, my, I mean, my, I received an impartation. Like, how can you receive an impartation? Because, you know, we receive impartations for, by sitting in the presence of a teaching anointing, by the laying on of hands. And, and I just, when I got off that call, my, my, my jaw just, just dropped. I'm like, my God, my life has just been changed by this revelation of the kingdom that he, that he carries and purpose, identity. And so I want to share something with you this morning um, that I was reading. It just really, it just really blessed me, and it has to do with purpose. And the Lord was showing me about this whole issue of purpose. Uh, but I want to remind you: listen, you can sow, and I can do it. Seed. You know, sometimes the enemy has has even stalled your giving. He stalled your finances. He stalled you in some area. And sometimes you just gotta let the seed break a cycle. You know, last year I sowed a, 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 a at the head of the year I sowed a big seed into a certain ministry. And the Lord has instructed me to sow, listen, the Lord has instructed me to sow 10 times that much at the head of this year. We're just getting into the new Hebrew year. I sowed a big seed last year. It was, it was a significant seed. It wasn't the largest seed I'd ever sown, but it was a big seed. And so he told me to sow 10 times, not twice. Not three times, not five times, not to double it, not to triple it, not to quite, but to sow 10 times as much. And I'm like, oh dear God, are you sure? Matter of fact, I just heard the Lord say to sow 11 times. Well, thank you. I should have just kept it to myself. To sow 11 times as much. 11 times as much. What is the, what is the, what is the significance of the number 11? Does anybody know the significance of the, of, of the number 11? Praise God. 11 times as much. Praise God. 11 times as much. I better stop before he tells me 12 times. Dear God. But sometimes you've got to be willing to step out in radical obedience. Today somebody needs to sow an I can do it seed. If the enemy's been holding you down from your purpose, holding you down from what God has told you to do, holding you, listen, sow an I can do it seed. Sow an I can do it seed. You don't have to sow 11 times as much as you've ever sown. That was my mandate. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Would it be easier for me to keep the 11 times? Yes, but I'm going to look up what does the number 11 mean, and I'm going to find out what I'm in for. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sow a seed today. Sow a seed if this ministry is blessing you. I have many things to do and not enough uh, time in the day to do them all myself. I've got to get more help. I've got to buy more technology. I've got to do so many things that I need your to help to execute the vision, to bring this prayer, uh, to bring prayer equipping, to bring prophetic training into the nations of the earth, to bring uh, encouragement to people. Dear God, so many are, are, are lacking uh, courage. And so I want to, my part of the new thrust of my ministry is to to bring a, a new strength and to, remember I told you last week about the encouragement 
prophetic training and prayer training, all that's good. But uh, I'm streaming in or weaving in this uh, message of encouragement everywhere I go now. Why? Because people are discouraged. Christians are beaten down by the world and by the devil. We've got to rise up and fight because there is a fight worth fighting. It's called the good fight of faith. So a seed at uh, jenniferleclair.org slash donate. jenniferleclair.org slash donate. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. You can also become a partner there. And just go ahead and whatever you're going to sow, just make it 11 times more. <laughs> I'm kidding. If the Lord tells you to do that, do that. The thing about sowing is you must sow where the Lord tells you, how much the Lord tells you, and when the Lord tells you. If you don't sow in the moment he tells you to sow, you could be missing out on a Kairos moment to bring in a, an immediate harvest. You know, some harvests take a while to come in, and other harvests take time to come in. I don't understand why Why sometimes your seed right now will tip over a harvest from seeds you sowed a year ago. You just don't ever, it's part of the mystery of the kingdom. You just got to be obedient. That's why obe radical obedience is so important. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. PayPal.me slash JenniferLeClaire. PayPal.me slash JenniferLeClaire. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can go there. Uh, you can also do text to give 754 701 2161. 754 701 2161. Type the word pray. Type the word pray. It's not for prayer requests, it's for giving. 754-701-2161, and you can go there and uh, and and sow a seed. You can also send a check or a money order. I know many of you have been uh, taking advantage of that, uh, and we appreciate it. I thank you for the mega seeds that you've sown uh, into the ministry as well. If you want to sow into the into the to the to the to the vision fund if you can do that through paypal as well just type in mega or vision or building uh, you can also go to megapayback.com now what i've done is i've put for the first thousand people that will sow a thousand dollars i have put together a package where you can get a number of my books tons of my uh teaching uh, uh recordings uh access to uh uh, to some of my networks and schools and those sorts of things. So it's for the first thousand people only uh, because I've got to put a cap on it somewhere. The first thousand people that sow a thousand dollar mega payback seed uh, will receive, and, and it's going to take us a couple weeks to process this. So please don't sow a seed this morning and say, I want my stuff this afternoon. It's going to, we've got to put the packages together, okay? This was something that uh, a friend of mine, inspired by the Spirit, told me to do. And every time this one particular friend tells me to, 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 to give me a strategy it always works and he said here's what you need to do you need to sow back into the lives of those that are sowing into the mega fund campaign and there's the importance of the number a thousand a thousand the number a thousand is it, it means a completeness completeness it's a completeness it's like a it's like a it's like a blessing uh, it's, it's completeness and increase and so that's why that's why he told me thousand I learned from John Eckhart about the importance of the number thousand so the first thousand people that sow a thousand dollar seed and people have been sowing into this all weekend I'm not sure exactly uh, where we are uh, but it's the first thousand people amen that sow into the mega payback so you can do that at megapayback.com if you want to read more about the vision be sure to get to be part of the uh, uh, the, the thunderclap you can also find that at mega means complete yeah. If you can also find that at the Mega Payback site, the Thunderclap campaign doesn't cost you anything to lend your social media voice to the campaign. Yeah, no, 11 is not disorder and chaos. That there's Sometimes there's a good side of a... Listen, when it comes to dreams and numbers, there's many times a good side of the number and a bad side of the number. There is a there is a good side of a color and the and a bad side of the color, okay? Many times there's, there's, the, there's the pro and the con in any uh, different thing, okay? Uh, so you have to understand there's a, there's a... The number 11 is basically two number ones. Two number ones. Number 12 means government. The number one is God. Okay? And so we have to be very careful about looking in dream books for numbers and not understand the, um, the order, the order of the number. <coughs> Somebody bless me. Praise God. One, um, one is the number of God. And so 11 could be, you know, you know, you know, the presence of God increasing. You have to, we have to be very careful, uh, uh, not to, um, 
uh, not to just look at, I've learned that because there's so many things. I'm looking in the dream book right now at the number 11 and it does. It says disorder, disintegration, imperfection, and incompleteness. But I'm, I'm quite sure that's not what uh, the Lord is saying. So we have to be very careful with the dream, the dream interpretation books and what we find on the internet. You have to look at, at the greater context. Sometimes, you know, you can go and look in every book of the Bible at the 11th chapter and the 11th verse. Sometimes the Lord is trying to speak to you about that. Amen. And so we have to, under, we have to understand that. If you want to learn more about dreams, I want to invite you uh, to go to mydreamcodes.com. It's part of my school of the spirit. I've partnered with uh, James Gall and Alexis Mastin and DeAndrea. Uh, DeAndrea did, she deals with dreams about children, the dreams your children have. Okay, the dreams your children have. So they're going to be five sessions. They put the wrong price up there when we launched this. It was much higher than it was supposed to be. And so if you went there and saw that and you're like, wow, I'm like, yeah, that's what I said. Um, I told Alexis that's that's uh, that's not right. So um, that was changed. So there is a price for it. It's not free. We've partnered with uh, with James Gall, who is the, one of the preeminent dream teachers in America. He's doing two of the five sessions. And you can go uh, to mydreamcodes.com. See, we all have a dream code. We all have a code. We all have a language. Everything that you, there's some baselines. There's certain things always mean certain things, but there's also things that are subjective to you. You have a dream code. You know, if you uh, were bit by a dog when you were a kid or you were, you know, something you had a bad encounter with a dog and you have a dream with a dog, well, you're not going to, you're not, it's not a positive thing for you. But if you're a dog lover and you've had dogs all your life, you know, that you've loved, then that dog is a as a, as a good sign to you. And so, you know, there's some things that they, they're, the, the interpretation always belongs to God, but many of us have dream codes that are based on culture, based on our own life experiences. So we're going to do five, five, just five weeks of teaching on dreams. And you can go to my dream codes dot com my dream codes dot com hallelujah uh, it starts on uh, in November uh, there is early bird pricing now it will pick up but the price was incorrect uh, when it launched so now the new price is there listen uh, on Wednesday I believe it's at 7 p.m. I'm gonna actually be in Atlanta filming TV uh, I'm gonna be in Atlanta uh, actually Augusta Georgia filming TV on Wednesday but on 7 o'clock I'm gonna have a special telephone seminar called ignite your prophetic voice and it's free uh, it is it is free so you want to go sign up for that you're going to want to go to Jen uh, to Jennifer LeClaire dot eventbrite dot com Jennifer LeClaire dot eventbrite dot com get in on that free uh, telephone equipping ignite your prophetic voice I'm going to be doing some prophetic training there you're going to want to be a part of that if you if you're trying to if you're in a season especially where it seems like your hearing has been dull uh, maybe you don't seem to be hearing from God or you're you're not sure if you're hearing from God you need to get ignited again so go to there sign up when you sign up you'll get the uh, you'll get the the code to sign in it's free uh, also our breaking Jezebel assignments and alignments uh, teaching on October the 21st you're gonna want to go to ahop.tv now last night we did the book launch and I tell you what it was awesome you can watch it uh, you can you can watch it on our uh, on uh, ahop.tv it's a free it was a free event uh, it was crystal clear I want you to experience if you have not I'll probably even send it out to my mailing list today uh, the the quality of our cameras the quality of our Wi-Fi the quality of our sound uh, there's a few people that are saying well I can't hear it and I can't see it it's not on our side it's on it's on your side if you're not able to see and watch it, this is crystal clear it's the best quality that you can get is also on Periscope and Facebook, but I want you to see the quality that we have on AHOP TV. It's much better than Periscope. It's much better than Facebook. Uh, you can go and you can see that. I will um, try to post the link on my Facebook page today so that you can see that. Amen. It was really good. The Me Waging War for Your Mega Payback event, Sunday, October the 22nd, 5 p.m. It's also on the Eventbrite page, uh, Jennifer LeClaire. Uh, dot eventbrite.com also the ignite network prophetic uh, vision for 2018 if you're part of ignite you're going to want to make sure that you don't miss that I need you to come on that way you can ask questions the ignite networks prophetic vision for 2018 if you're not part of 
If you're not part of Ignite and you want to learn about what is Ignite, my mission is to ignite a generation of prophetic voices. Uh, you can join Ignite at IgniteNow.org. When you join Ignite, you get discounts to my schools and other things like that. So, for example, if you want to be part of the Spiritual Warfare School, you can do that uh, by, by you'll get a 15% discount from, uh, from being part of Ignite. Uh, so, uh, those are the main things I wanted to share with you today. I remember Wednesday... Ignite Your Prophetic Voice, a free webinar. You can uh, you can be part of that, uh, and uh, and just you'll get the call. It's just, it's, it's just on the phone. You don't have to, to watch a video. It's on the phone. Amen. So you can do that. Listen, I want to uh, remind you I'll be with uh, Jennifer Evaz this weekend. I'm teaching twice on Friday. I, I heard it's a blowout with regard to attendance, and some of my books will be there. I'm hoping Charisma didn't mess up and not send my, my books. Praise God. Amen. So you can do that. But I want to talk to you uh, right quick. That's what we say in the South, right quick. About your potential. Your potential. Because I really want to see you all come into your potential prophetically. To come into your potential. Uh, to come into p your potential in your, your life and in every area. Uh, so I want to talk to you about potential. Uh, potential. See, 2 Corinthians 5 and 5 says, Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what has come. You were created, oops, I dropped my book. You were created with a purpose. You were created uh, for such a time as this. You know, of all the times that you could have been born in the earth, you were born now. It's not an accident. And God has a now purpose for you. God has a progressive purpose for you. See, God has a purpose. And sometimes your, your ultimate purpose for your life does not change. But your assignment and your purpose in any season may change according uh, to that which uh, God needs you to do. And he has the, uh, the right and the authority to shift your season. Uh, your ultimate purpose never changes. But there are, sh listen, there are short, this is not from Dr. Miles Monroe's book. This is me talking by the Spirit. There are short-term purposes and long-term purposes. Your short-term purposes collectively will help you fulfill your long-term overarching life purpose. You have a purpose. God has created you for a reason. It's not just to be beaten up on by the devil. It's not just to be, you know, you've got a purpose. You've got a grand, it's a radical, I'm telling you, it's a radical purpose for your life. But most people uh, don't, they take their purpose to the graveyard. There is so much untapped potential in graveyards. People who never pressed in, listen, I'm not blaming you. Don't take this the wrong way. I'm not blaming you if you don't know what your purpose is, but I am encouraging you to press in because listen, God, listen, God is not trying to hide your purpose from you. He's really not. The enemy is trying to hide your purpose from you. So sometimes you've got to, you've got to read books on purpose. Dr. Miles Monroe has this, uh, it's called living with purpose devotions for discovering your God given potential. The enemy will have you running around in circles, doing everything but your purpose. He will have you spread yourself so thin, trying to please man and trying to please your pastor, trying to do things that you're not even called to do so that you never really get into that, which you are called to do. You never, the devil does not want you to get into your purpose zone. Listen, listen, the devil doesn't want you to get into your purpose zone. He wants you to stay in your comfort zone. He doesn't want you to get in your purpose zone because he knows when you get into that purpose, that place of purpose, man, it's like there's no stopping you. Yeah, he can still resist you, but he won't stop you because when you tap into that purpose, you're tapping into the very heart of God, the very will of God for your life. Miles Monroe said, potential is not what you have done, but what you are yet able to do. See, sometimes we rest on our laurels. We, we're content in what we've accomplished, and we want to stay in that safe place and camp out in that place of success. But, you know, you can be successful. Listen, you can be successful in your life and not necessarily ever fulfill your ultimate purpose. You can attain to a measure of success and not tap your full potential. What you, He says, in other words, what you have done is no longer your potential. What you have successfully accomplished is no longer your potential. It is said that unless you do something beyond what you have done, you will never grow or experience your full potential. Potential demands that you never settle for what you have accomplished. One of the great many enemies of your potential is success. See, I was, listen, listen, listen very carefully to me. I was very successful 
in the secular world. I worked for Microsoft. I worked for Amazon. I worked for Fortune 500 companies doing marketing copywriting. I worked for, for the New York Times and the Associated Press. I was at the, listen, I was at the very top of my field in the journalism and marketing copywriting world. I was at the top 1% of my field. You have to understand, most writers never attain to that which I attain, and I'm not boasting. I'm trying to tell you that I was successful, but that was not my ultimate purpose. That was part of my purpose. That was a short-term part of my purpose, was to learn those skills so that I could then be a, a more effective communicator in the kingdom. I was at the top of my field. Most people don't write for Microsoft and Amazon and Google. Most people don't have that opportunity. I was at the top, income wise, I was at the top 1% of my field as a writer. Income wise, I was at the top 1%. But it was not God's ultimate purpose. So listen, I laid all of that down. Hear me. I laid that down. I laid down that success. I walked away willingly from that success to enter into my greater purpose. Are you hearing me? Success is the enemy of your potential because my potential was far greater than the success in the secular world. My potential in the kingdom will far out, will far surpass anything, 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 anything that I've ever done in the secular world. But I was trained in Egypt for the kingdom work. Everything I've ever done in the, ki in, the, in the kingdom, I was trained first in Egypt. And that's just my path. It might not be yours. Dr. Miles Monroe said, it is also important that you never let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. Remember, I can do it. I can do it. That's why some of you need today to sow an I can do it seed. Seriously, I'm not trying to get money out of your pocket. I'm trying to get purpose in your heart. You need to sow an I can do it seed, some of you. Dr. Miles Monroe said, the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but a life that never realized its full potential. And he said, you must decide today not to rob the world of the rich, valuable, potent, untapped resources locked away within you. Potential never has a retirement plan. Amen? Amen? Potential never has a retirement plan. I intend with everything in me to in this season, listen, in this season, reassess everything that I'm doing because I've just made a major transition. Some of you know about it. Some of you haven't. I've not sort of made a big announcement about it. But, but there's, 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 there's potential. When God releases you from one assignment, it's, it's to step into greater potential. Your transition is all about reaching the next level of your potential. And potential is progressive. The potential you had when you were two years old or when you were 10 years old or when you were 20 years old, it, it, you, you grow. In other words, as you learn more about God and who he is, as you begin to trust more and have more faith, it unlocks more potential because you'll be willing to take a risk. You'll be willing to step out in faith. Amen. So let me pray that over you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for radical potential realized. I thank you, Lord, in this season that we'll not just sit and do the same things we've always done, but we'll look for what's next. We'll look for the mega transition. We'll look for the, uh, for the, 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 I guess just for the next. Lord, help us to step into the next, to step out of necessarily what the world sees as success, to be willing to let go those things that you're done with, the things where the grace is lifted. And to step into, and not to worry about, we, the Lord is just showing me, somebody, oh, somebody's going to be hurt if I change my mind, if I move on. Somebody's going to be hurt. People are depending on me. People uh, look to me for provision, whatever it is. You've got to follow God. And God will take care of the people that you think are going to be disappointed. You, you just can't. You cannot sacrifice your purpose and your potential for what somebody else thinks or needs. You have to look at what God needs from you, what God thinks about you. And God will take care of them. The fear of the Lord has to be, uh, and the obedience toward him has to be more uh, important to us than, see, we don't want to hurt people. I'm not saying don't have, this, don't have regard for people. I'm just saying we must regard God's will more than what man's will would have us to do. Amen? Follow God. So, Lord, help us. Give us the courage to follow God. And, Lord, encourage our hearts today as we go back in worship. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You guys are awesome. I hope that encouraged you today. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You really can. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. The the, the spiritual warfare, the new book is still 20% off. That discount goes away. I have put it up for the uh, the event. 
and I've got to give people time to respond to it because I know they're in different time zones and some people didn't get to watch the video yet, but the 20% discount on the books. As a matter of fact, everything in the store is 20% off right now, so go there. Some of my materials will help you tap into your purpose and help you fight against the enemy's war against your purpose, especially the new book, The Spiritual Warfare Battle Plan. Go check that out. God is good. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Remember mydreamcodes.com. We'll discuss all these things, these issues of dreams. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Thanks for the super hearts. Thank you for the super hearts. Hallelujah on Periscope. Thank you for the super hearts. Whatever God's called you to do, you can do it. Ha, I will. It's Charlie and I like that. I will do it. Amen. I will do it. Hallelujah. Radical new season. Radical victory. Radical, radical, radical. Amen. God is good. You can do it. You can do it. Thanks for the super hearts. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And Broadway, yes. New seasons. You can do it. You really can. You will do it. Not only can you, but will you. But you, but you will. It's kind of like God. Not only is he able to, to bring a miracle, he wants to. I will do it. I will do it. Radical victory. Amen, amen, amen. All right, let's go back into worship. I am resting today. So don't nobody burn up my phone. I'm trying to rest and get some coffee with Prophet Vanessa. She doesn't know it yet. I mandated her to take me and have coffee because I'm going to be on the road for a solid week. And I must have some good coffee. Dear God, I never know where I'm going if they're going to have any decent coffee. That's the worst part of being on the road. Hallelujah. I'm resting today. Don't nobody burn up my phone. You know, most ministries are off on Monday. And so that's my new practice. Hallelujah. I'm going to start taking Mondays off. I'm going to start taking Mondays off. If you're international and you're trying to get a copy of my new book, you can go there to tinyurl.com slash prophetic books. tinyurl.com slash prophetic books. You can go to tinyurl.com slash prophetic books. Let's go back into worship. Hallelujah. God is good. I didn't tell you about my meeting with Apostle Naomi Dowdy, but maybe I'll tell you about that tomorrow. Where is my worship music? Here it is. Bless you guys. Thanks for the super hearts. Love you. Guatemala coffee. Yes, amen. Hallelujah.